Well, a very good afternoon uh, on the 22nd of August, is it? Yes, it is. 22nd of August, 23. I had to think there for a moment. I'm up here on the east side of the A826 um, Aberfeldy Road. I'm lowering my camera slightly because it's passing cars. Um, I'm facing southbound, of course, but uh, I'm going to be heading over here. See, I was up yesterday. Incidentally, if you hear some weird noises, it's not my stomach. It's the, uh, it's the branches of the tree wiping themselves across the top of my car and at the side. But, um, anyway, the story is I was up, uh, walked the uh, wage route from um, Amory to Glen Cockle yesterday. This is Glen Cockle we're in. It was a bit of a mix mash, um, mishmash, sorry, Ed, you got your brain working here. Um, and I couldn't help, help emphasising that uh, it's so important to follow the map, not to follow the lie of the land in any, any way. You've got to really just uh, examine the map, Carl Dirk, camera down, any, and um, simply do not uh, diverge from the, the details on the map. I um, went over to look at the old uh, cottage of uh, Inarocho, or something it's called, and uh, it's in ruins. I'll put all the information up, I'll do a separate vlog. It wasn't particularly good conditions, it was rather dull and misty and a bit damp in the air but I eventually found the route uh, on the return leg um, which saved me tramping on this uh, very dangerous road I'll be going down here, hence my parking position crossing the bridge, there's the only bridge across the the water and uh, where that uh, isolated tree is over in the distance I'll uh, make my way across the moorland and uh, Wage Road is at the back. It's probably one of the better sections, actually. It's, uh, it's, it's, it is utilised by um, estate vehicles. So I think they've probably done a little bit of work on, on the actual original road. But what we'll do is we'll walk down and try and uh, follow it down to where I was yesterday and then come back up given time. I mean, it's 20 past one. I purpose to set off late again because of the showery conditions this morning down in Strathern and that was the case yesterday I set off quite late as well probably uh, well after two o'clock before I got moving the legs um, it's pretty bleak this glen I have to say especially up the top and uh, yeah in wintry conditions it gets uh, it gets one of the early roads to close, unfortunately, it's just uh, so uh, bleak up here. Interesting noise, that isn't it? So we won't hang about, otherwise we'll be chewing up too much film at this part of the uh, Johnny Allen. This is Ben Lee, I thought, at the back there which I've uh, obviously been upon and the, the higher one here, I can't remember the name just now I've done it uh, a couple of Augustes ago, 2021 I've done it since then of course but my first uh, tramp was across the moorland and um, it was an extremely difficult ascent actually it was uh, it doesn't look a long way from here but it's uh, it's 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 quite a distance and it's quite a height. But it's a lovely afternoon turning out and that's why I've come out at this time. So let's get moving, Andy. We'll get a cigarette and a... Uh, I've got Bramble Tea with me today. I'm actually thinking of changing my name by deed poll. Um, I'm considering this and I think I shall change it to uh, Miss You Bramble Bottom. Yes, I think Mystery Bramble Bottom will, will suit me very well, I think. And, um, yes, yeah, so 
I'll stick with that, I'm sure. Okay, so let's get going, Eddie. Bit breezy right now, but uh, it's, uh, it's it's not uh, entirely cold, is it? I mean, there are uh, still a lot of uh, tourists going around in the camper vans and stuff like that, with bikes hanging off the back and stuff, you know. But um, I mean, most of them I see are from Switzerland, uh, Belgium, the Netherlands, and uh, and Ge did I say Germany? So that's that's the main the main bulk of them. They come from this uh, from these parts, and uh, when the wind blows in Belgium like this, I always remember this fact. This came to mind. Um, it's constant uh, when the wind blows. This tremendous whistling sound. Um, First time I was there, we were obviously staying at a place called Raverside, just outside uh, Ostend at my relative's place, and uh, it's near Maria Cook. And uh, Middle Cook and Maria Cook is the names of the places, nice churches and stuff. Very small places, right enough, but uh, not far from the main hustle and bustle of Ostend, which is a wonderful place. Fantastic. Um, and lovely beaches, I have to say, great beaches. Uh, the whole, the whole Belgian coast is famed for the beaches, actually. But uh, just slightly inland, uh, there's nothing at all for the uh, the wind to to break, and so therefore um, it whistles. It's very unusual, but it's uh, it's just a constant uh, whistling, and it can drive you quite insane. The uh, Flemish people are obviously quite used to it, but uh, if you're on holiday and you've not uh, experienced this whistling before, it is uh, it is quite dementing. And there's another little story for you about life of mine. And, uh, I've been to Belgium ten times now. I might go back to Ostend actually. I, fa I fancy a visit to to Ostend. It's got it's got great. Uh, well, it used to, at least, well, in the past, it had fantastic nightlife and stuff, but I'm not sure what it's like now. So let's get going, Andy, otherwise we'll be getting demotivated. We should be getting up and going. Okay, so I've come across that rough terrain and uh, just about onto the, uh, the pathway soon. You've probably seen the northeast uh, horizon there, the uh, turning... Uh, rotary blades of the uh, Griffin Wind Farm. It's just slightly east of the, the road that I was talking about earlier. Uh, absolutely hopeless things. The, uh, the generating electricity today, because the wind is blowing, if it's uh, like gale force or storm force winds, they, they switch them off. They can't operate when it's too windy. And obviously, when there's no wind at all, they don't turn. And uh, what's more, what they don't tell you is the uh, they don't they can't store any electricity with these things. Unlike uh, coal fire or gas-powered uh, electricity stations uh, or hydroelectric, for that matter, like Ben Crooken, for example, the um, they can store, a nuclear power can store uh, uh, electricity that's made, but these things can't. So all they do is they feed into the national grid, and somebody is having, you know, putting the kettle on at, at lunchtime today, two o'clock, um, should be getting cheaper electricity because there's a surplus, but they don't. It's a complete and utter scam. It's, a, it's money for landowners and uh, the government and uh, whoever else is involved over energy and all the rest of it. But for consumers, it's, it's, a, it's a scam. Crookin uh, Power Station, for example, is on standby 24-7, 365 days a year, so that if these things don't turn, Crookin Power Station will generate enough power um, to... to to uh, actually give El Edinburgh, the whole city of Edinburgh, electricity for, for an hour. Quite phenomenal. So Ben Crookin's always on uh, standby 
When the national grid need electricity, they just phone, uh, well, ask Ben Crook and Lot to get things moving. It doesn't happen immediately, of course. It takes a couple of hours to get everything set up to start generating. But uh, there you go. And that's how often you'll get power cuts, uh, because there's not enough electricity on a windless day. So the power will fluctuate and go out sometimes. Anyway, any, I'm not here to talk about electricity. It's very similar to yesterday. It's a wee bit brighter down down that way, but uh, it's very similar. Um, so there's a bit of a, a rain shower sliding through from the uh, the west, but this gives you a perfect indication of uh, the route. And you will see how it's uh, if you cast your eyes in front of the uh, the fir trees in the distance there, you can see the uh, the route as it comes across. And uh, right down there is where I was yesterday on my walk from MRE. Again, it's not a place that many people visit. It's a uh, fairly remote countryside, this. But the tourists uh, love gazing at the purple heather and stuff, that's for sure. And that's the the hills, obviously, which uh, stare down into uh, Amo Reef from the from the east. Okay, so there's uh, the line of the road. If you're interested, that is. You might not be interested in stuff, stuff but uh, I am. This is the route of the 1730s road. Ladies and gentlemen, don't worry about me. I'm not going to cause you any trouble. I'm a visitor to these parts. Please allow me, uh, you know, access without disturbance. And as I say, the state road, so this one leads on to the main road, and uh, that's why it's kept uh, up, up to scratch, whereas this one's not. I don't think you can get anything more Scottish than that. The heather in bloom. It's beautiful. It's just a pity we couldn't get the sun on it. Just, I mean, it once the sun hits this stuff, it's just a beast. But, uh, and we'll keep trudging on, Annie. And you can see the remnants of uh, previously burnt heather. It's called muir burning. And uh, they burn that so that the new growth can come up to feed the. Uh, well, not just the grouse, but all the uh, wildlife and other birds, these little berries and uh, the blueberries and stuff like that. And of course, uh, what's left makes superb kindling. I think I've mentioned that to you before, but I don't think you were listening. It's really bonny, isn't it? Henry! My man's looking for y'all! Well, I'll tell her you're meant to be home for lunch! Naughty! I'll tell my man you ignored me! Once again, it's uh, worth just noting the construction materials that would have been removed, placed by the side of the road. These are not modern uh, fixtures, these are purposely moved off the ground to allow the, uh, the workmen to place the gravel and other stones on top and uh, fill the gaps. Must have been very treacherous in uh, the winter trying to get through this lot, so I don't think they've... Well, there's no one, no one actually travelled very far in the winter months, did they? Well, I hope you can hear me above the wind. I'm 
me try and crouch down a bit. But this sort of makes sense. Um, I was over there yesterday, a little bit forward a bit, and I end up over the other side of that, down behind those uh, trees, in some pretty boggy ground. And the problem was that I, I couldn't follow the river down because it was into private property. But here's the line, the route of the uh, the wage roads. The map is absolutely spot on, you know. And it does cross the moorland, it's not very visible because of the undergrowth and the heather and stuff, you see. But we'll cross over and we'll take ourselves a bit of a walk down and uh, try and reach the point it was yesterday and then I'll show you the gap through the trees but I eventually uh, set foot upon and uh, realised that this is this is the direct route from yesterday. I was a bit of a kerfuffle I have to say but uh, so this is good that we've joined up from uh, well I've obviously done it from uh, Kreef uh, up to Fendoch via the the Fulford Inn and the stuff like that, and I've done it from Fendoch over into the small glen. And uh, for the Newton Brig that recently up to Amalry, and then yesterday from Amalry up to this point over here. And now I've done the stretch from uh, through Glen Cockle, not the north part of Hastingside, but certainly the southern part. So we'll uh, wander down there and get ourselves through that bog land. And uh, we'll uh, have a cup of tea down there, I think, Annie. We've done all right, actually. It's only taken us about 45 minutes. That's from the car. It's not bad, Annie. In actual fact, I was looking at my uh, data from that uh, lengthy day out in the, the mountains. It was about La Cria and, and the rain and stuff. Uh, well, I, I put it down as a 12 or 21 minute day, which is probably right, but um, the actual movement time was uh, 7 hours 42 minutes, which is not bad going for 22 miles and uh, uh, getting to over 2,800 feet. So I was pretty impressed, because uh, I always try and get in three, 3 miles per hour as a good walking uh, pace, even on... Uh, even the high street of the town, it's a, it's a good walking pace at three miles an hour. So I was particularly chuffed when I looked at the data. And uh, and likewise yesterday I'd done about six miles and the, the time was two hours, 42 minutes uh, movement time. So I don't account for brakes and all the rest of it, you see. And camera work, which takes up quite a bit of time in these, these things. But the sun's not uh, has been as, as extensive this afternoon as uh, bloody Met Office promised. They're absolute damn fools, you know that. They're, they're, they're absolutely hopeless. I'm going to ta start taking uh, snapshots, photographs of the uh, weather for two, th two or three days ahead. And when it says it's going to be uh, <clears throat> pissing the rain, it's, uh, it turns out to be nice and bright and sunny. And when they say it's going to be it's, you know, full sunshine, it pisses the rain. So they, they, they really are, they're pretty hopeless. So if they can't get that right, how the hell can they get uh, this nonsense about climate change uh, so accurate they keep going on about? That's another lot of absolute drivel. Total baloney as far as I'm concerned. The, uh, the landscape and everything has been exactly the same as it's always been in August. The, the, you know, there's no difference at all. The only difference is, is the uh, the weather we've had has not been, uh, you know, of ex the expectations we would have for the summer. But as I said already yesterday, given the fact that we've had our, uh, you know, almost a nine month or ten month or even more, because last summer was gorgeous, we've had about a years uh, where the reservoirs were falling sharply and all the riverbeds were drying up because of no rain, so nature's just replenishing everything. As nature does, it always balances things out. And if man would just leave the bloody thing alone and just stop interfering, things would be all right. And um, fed up with that uh, that Green Party, it's uh, those snivelers and uh, 
you know, in the Scottish Parliament, that's Harvey and Slater, the couple of idiots, and uh, idiots and the nationalists as, as well, it's uh, in cahoots with them as well about everything. Just leave everything alone, it's fine.